Whew, man, it has been a busy couple of weeks. I got a few more cameras. I got some other people to buy more cameras. I planned out a bunch of videos for all those cameras I made other people get. Uh, I took a trip. I got engaged. I got older. I got the new issue of Rucksack Magazine. If you don't know about it, be sure to check that out. But uh, yeah, man, it has been it has been a busy month. Cue the temporary intro. All right guys, thanks for checking out this video. So here we go over all things film photography and the best way to use those today. So today we're talking about the Stylus Epic Zoom. This has a 30 to 80 millimeter zoom lens with a 4.5 to 8.9 aperture. It has a shutter speed of four seconds to one one thousandth of a second. Now this is a completely automatic camera. It has autofocus in it. All your settings are gonna be automatic as well. It has a built-in flash. It takes a CR123 battery. It has automatic wind and rewind. It is ultra compact, weighing just over six ounces, and it is weather resistant. The minimum focusing distance for this camera is about two feet. Now, it also has some other useful and useless features, such as a panoramic mode, a red eye reduction mode, a landscape mode, a self timer, a fill and flash, and then some other ones like a night scene flash. Now this point and shoot series by Olympus is one of the most popular point and shoot cameras there is. This particular model is not as well sought after because of the fact it is a zoom lens at 4.5 as opposed to the original which is a 35 millimeter fixed at 2.8. Now the other cameras in this line are the Olympus Stylus Epic, the Olympus MJU2, also known as the Mu2, and then the Olympus XA. The Olympus XA was released in 1979 and is a range style finder camera. It actually has a little knob just here below the lens to adjust your focus. Now, since it is a fully automatic 35 millimeter camera, the ISO functions go from 50 to 3200 for coated film. If you don't know what coated film is, this is coated film. That silver and black squared off set up there, that's the code on each individual film canister. Now for non-coated film, it's automatically set to a 100 ISO. The Olympus II was released in 1997 and there are nine different variations of that with minor random functions that aren't really useful in most cases. Okay, so now we got the specs out of the way, let's talk about how this camera functions. So I took this camera to Iceland about a month ago. I also took with me my Nikon F, my Nikon F2, of course my Fuji X-T2. I also took my medium format Rolly Cord and then my DJI Mavic Pro, yes complete overkill and completely absurd. My backpack has never weighed more. But I took this guy along because I really wanted to test out its functions and see what it was capable of. I went to Iceland three years ago and I took the Olympus Mewtwo with me then. I loved it, it's great, it's lightweight, compact. The photos came out really well for what it is. And so this time around I wanted to take this camera because of that zoom lens. I wanted to see what I could do with that as far as maybe mixing in some portraits with it and just what that would make as far as the difference between this and the fixed 35 2.8 lens. Now I absolutely love taking this camera with me to Iceland. Like I said, it's ultra compact, six ounces, it fit right into my pocket. I forgot it was there half the time. It's great for all those quick little shots where you just want to pull over quick, get a shot, and then move on to that location before sunset or something. And you don't want to pull out your bigger 35 millimeter cameras and fix all your settings and make sure everything's right. This, you can just pull it out, shoot, get back in the car, and get on to your next spot. So like I said, I made sure to take a few portraits with this as well, because I wanted to see what that 80 millimeter would give me. So without further ado, here are some of the pictures I took with this in the Faroe Islands and Iceland. Okay, so we spent three days in the Faroe Islands before going on to Iceland. Now for any of you considering the Faroe Islands, I don't recommend three days. Three days is not nearly enough. You can only get flights in the island on certain days of the week. They don't have flights every day, so you're limited there. And then of course you have to take ferries or flights to other smaller islands around 
and if you miss a ferry you have to wait for the next one and traveling around can be a little bit difficult to do in such a short amount of time. But we had plans in Iceland that we couldn't miss and because of the flight situation we weren't able to push it back at all. So three days is all we had in Faroe Islands before going on to Iceland. Okay so first up is this shot of Jack at a waterfall in the Faroe Islands. Now at this point in time all of my equipment is completely drenched. I actually had to go back up to this waterfall after we made it all the way down because we forgot something. So that was great. The styles held up great. Picture I think is pretty clear. Um, the focus looks good. It's on her and that front foreground, uh, the background, there's a little bit of separation you can see there. So in case you're wondering, I'm using Fuji 400 ISO film. Uh, so it's going to be a little greener, but in this particular situation, I don't think it's a big deal. I'm pretty happy with how that came out. It looks pretty good, pretty clear. I don't see any issues. Now this is also that same location, just facing the other way. I had her stand there at the edge. This is with the 30 millimeter. So I'm still shooting completely wide. I haven't zoomed in yet. Um, but I got up on top of a rock and kind of shot down at her. Now this one isn't as clear. Uh, the focus I think is a little off or maybe there's just water on the lens. It was really wet up there. Um, but I think that front area of the grass is a little bit more in focus. So I think this is one of those times where the focus kind of missed. So this is another spot in the Faroe Islands. Not too bad. The flash did go off here. By the way, the flash is automatic. You can turn it off if you want to. Um, but otherwise, every time you close it and reopen it, the flash is going to be automatically on if it thinks it needs to use that extra light. But this isn't too bad. I, there's still detail in those shadows, which is pretty impressive to me for this little camera. Again, still shooting wide at 30 mil with this one as well. Now here you have a little more color with this landscape and the houses there. Still pretty clear, still looks great, still shooting wide. Now this one, the sun is just off to the left there if you're looking at this picture. Um, and it kept a lot of detail on those highlights, which I think is pretty awesome. So the light metering on this camera is fantastic. Uh, and I'm pretty happy with how all of these came out. None of them have been over or underexposed from what I can see. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with how that came out as well. It kept a lot of detail in there, which is great. Again, here it's the same thing. Uh, the colors look great. Now there's this one. This one actually looks pretty good. I'm happy with this. Uh, the colors are nice and bright. Focus is accurate. The lighting is accurate. No issues there. Now this one, here's a portrait. This one, the flash did go off, I think. Uh, I think you can kind of tell there in the front. So I took this portrait, I backed up, and I did shoot this at 80 millimeter, uh, and I had her stand right there in front of the waterfall. You can see there is a little bit of separation. Um, it actually looks pretty good. Uh, the focus is on, no issues there. Colors are pretty accurate. You have a little bit of separation. There's still plenty in focus in the background, but it's not overly blown out um, or too much is in focus. I think it's pretty good for what it is. And then there's this one. Highlights are great. All those clouds are there. Didn't lose any of that. Still have those nice bright magentas and blues and turquoise and then you still have a lot of detail in the shadow too actually in those greens. This one again you got those nice gold colors with sunrise. Another portrait here this is obviously as close as I could get with it focusing. Um, it will tell you whether it's in focus or not with a green or red dot in the viewfinder. Um, there's still great detail in this one as well for being really close. The background is pretty much in focus. It's really bright light. I'm shooting at a 400 stock film. So maybe the aperture set itself a little higher on this one. There is a lot of detail in that background, but I don't think it's too bad. Now this one I also shot at 80 mil too. So I got further back and I used this big chunk of ice there on the beach uh, to kind of create some separation. A little too close to her face on that but you can see there's still great detail. It focused fine. It didn't pick up on that big chunk of ice in the front. So I think that still looks pretty good. It's a little blown out in her face, uh, but again, it's really bright. I'm shooting at 400 speed film, middle of the day. This is one of the few times in Iceland when there was not a cloud in the sky. So you're gonna have that with a brighter light and uh, this camera only can go so far with its settings, but still not bad at all. Now, lastly, we have one more shot from the Faroe Islands. This particular model has a panorama feature, which I used once just for the sake of using it and showing you. Once I show you, you will realize it's pretty pointless. So we have this shot here on the island, and you can see that black bar on the top and the bottom. That is the panorama feature. It just crops out part of your 35 millimeter frame, and that is the panorama mode. This is the panorama button right here on this camera. And if you flip that switch, it drops down two blades that chop off part of the frame, which in turn makes it a panorama. So if you just put those off, you have a regular 35 millimeter shot. If you put that down, panorama. You get up, down, and that's how it works out. So you can see that feature is kind of pointless. Uh, you can do that in post, and then of course you can rearrange it how you want to, as opposed to shooting it in a panorama and just kind of losing part of the frame right from the get-go is kind of pointless, but nonetheless an interesting feature to have. So that about wraps it up with our Iceland photos with this Olympic Stylus Zoom 80 Deluxe. Now this is the Deluxe with the panorama mode, and then of course we have the Stylus Zoom 80 
which just doesn't have the panorama mode. Now, do I recommend this camera? If you can't get a hold of the Stylus Epic, then this is a good alternative. I got the two of these for six bucks total at a thrift store, so I scored with that. Um, but I do recommend the fixed 35 2.8. It's a better lens and has less issues. The problem with this is because it is a zoom lens, you're more likely to have it break on you. And then there are issues I've heard with light leaks coming through that zoom and the lens. Over time, the O-rings around these zooms will wear out and that'll let light in. So you're gonna get these kind of halos in your shots if these deteriorate over time. So you're better off with the fixed 35 2.8. But if you can get one of these for three bucks like I did, it's a great alternative. You can still get some great shots. And of course, since it's a zoom, you have a little bit more versatility you just lose out on that depth of field. But overall, definitely find yourself some sort of stylus epic. And I think it's a great camera to have on you at all times. If you want to point and shoot, it's one of the smallest you can get that is just always going to be on point. The focus can be a little iffy at times, but still, this is going to be one of the best options as far as point and shoots go. All right, guys, so thanks again for watching this video on the Olympus Stylus Epic Zoom 80. Now, remember, like I said, we've been picking up a lot of cameras. I've been making other people pick up a lot of cameras. So we do have a lot of cool videos coming your way with cameras I'm not sure a lot of you have seen. So make sure you keep checking in. I can tell you right now, one of these cameras is extremely hard to find. And I'm not sure there's a whole lot of people who've gotten their hands on one. So it will be an interesting video. So like I said, be sure to keep checking in. We get a lot more coming your way.